Times greatest hits. Definitely feeling good with our senior therapist from Unity.co in the house, Charmaine Marsh. Welcome back to the studio for the last time. And uh, it's going to be our very last session with you because uh, you can can you say what's happening? Oh yeah, we'll be moving out of Singapore for mm. a short while. So um, unfortunately, we won't be able to carry on these interesting chats every morning on Mondays. Aww. Aww. We will miss you, but we also wish you all the best. Thank you. Yeah. I like how you say for a short while. She's like five years, yeah, short for while. For a short while. <laughs> <laughs> you don't know. Oh, five years. Uh. Wow. At least, at least. Holy moly. <laughs> That's okay. if she decides to come back. If she decides, oh, it yeah. could be longer. Uh. Mm. Big move, big move. Oh, I'm preparing my heart, my heart. <laughs> so, um, in line with your big move today, we are going to be talking about you know how do we deal with big life changes and how to handle the anxiety that may come with that. Yeah, because you know life changes are part and parcel of life, and uh, it can even happen daily. So, can you set the context for us here, Shamane, about the idea of life changes, and are there ways to categorize such life changes? Which is interesting. I I had to look up. Um, categorizing life changes and generally there are positive life changes where something new comes into your life mm -hmm. and there's negative life changes where something's taken away and then other things that affect the intensity of these life changes is is it a fast change is it slower you know is it reversible or is it irreversible I think all oh. these things are kind of you know a way of us to put understand change mm. more effectively mm. yeah we are creatures of habit mm. humans yeah. and any kind of change um even the positive one, it just gets takes some time to get used to yeah, these things, right? Sure. How do we how do we sort of process that in a in a positive way? Um, well, I mean, like you rightly said, any kind of change is going to you know bring up some kind of stress and anxiety because things are going to be different. That's mm. the one thing that we can know for sure in change is that things are going to be different. And I guess the the positive spin that we can take to is the one thing that we can control is how we choose to see um, the differences that are going to happen in our life. Mm -hmm. and like um, if if you're going to have a new child in your life, what are the positives that you're going to get? If you have been let go from your job what are some positives that you can still bring up in this because that's the only thing that's within your control a lot of change that happens is just completely you know with kind of a leaf in the wind kind of thing yeah mm. yeah you know sometimes i feel like we do go through changes but we're not quite aware um kind of like what shazad is saying you, mm. you're not really processing mm. the fact that you're going through a major life change how do we recognize what are the early signs because for instance some people may get married and are like oh we've been together eight years mm. not really a big deal that we get married it's just a day but mm. then actually there is a whole lot of adjusting that's yep. going on and you're mm -hmm. suddenly stressed or yeah. anxious yeah i think the, i mean what we know about change is that we know that for sure life as we know it is going to be different i think that's the biggest thing that you know we can sit with that once you know there's change because a major change or you know your life is going to be impacted in some way or other um and you know that it's going to be a lot of stress involved there's going to be a lot of different perspectives involved and i think the thing is that the expectation of what to expect after that mm -hmm. you know, after i go through this marriage preparation i mean i've been together with my partner for eight years and mm -hmm. after marriage what's going to be different you know what expectations what perspectives uh what versions of myself am i supposed to be I think there's Ooh. a lot of weight of that on, on that as well mm. after I'm a mom after I'm promoted all these kind of things there's a lot of weight on that that's a deep question <laughs> what version of myself do I want to be whoa yeah. I don't think I've asked myself that <laughs> it's just like will I survive today go to the mirror <laughs> you know? and reflect I need to I need yeah. to reflect in front of my mirror but can you tell us this you know uh, how can life changes like you know anxiety is one of the big things uh, mm. you know one of the uh, results of a big life change what are others that we should take note of definitely the stress that comes with it like if you're preparing for any kind of change there's going to be a lot of unknowns and that's where the anxiety comes in and what can I expect what can I control what can't I control mm. what is it going to look like what am I going to be like what's the people gonna, around me going to be like what's life going to be like it's so many unknowns and mm. that a lot of fear comes into that and, and because of that there's a lot of you know a lot of disruption there's a lot of um, you know destabilizing event basically so um yeah, you know, it's about how can we, how can we try to regulate this 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 process? How can we try and pace ourselves as we go as we know we're going to go through this? Mm -hmm. Just you know, you're mm -hmm. you're down this path already. You're going down the river or up the river rather, up or down. <laughs> oh, that could be a question itself. It could be a question itself. <gasps> half empty, half full. Yeah, <laughs> are you going with the flow or against the flow of the river? Also, That's my other also, question. Yeah. <laughs> uh, is this, are these rapids or is this a gentle stream? Which is like what we said in the beginning. Is right. it fast or slow, reversible, <laughs> irreversible? <laughs> 
but, so deep. I feel like I'm doing my geography O level. Yeah, this, I thought it was oh a geography goodness. session. Yeah, oh, O level yeah, season. You know? Very stressed. <laughs> All right, we're chatting with Charmaine Marsh, who is the clinical director over at Goodity.co. It's our very final chat with her today because she too is going through a major life change. You can find out more as you join us on Facebook Live, facebook.com slash 1FM913. So uh, back with more of Charmaine in just a bit. Hang tight. Good. And Hi. hey guys, thank you so much for tuning in And of course, uh, it's our last session with Shamane Marsh The clinical director and senior therapist of Goodity.co And we just want to say, hey, send us your questions Because I'm pretty sure each and every one of us is impacted by life changes And you could, with your question, with your comment Win for yourself a facial treatment that's worth $199 from Beulab This is the Parisian Muesli Probiotics Antioxidant Facial It's basically not Nourishment and rejuvenation for your face yeah. could be life changing. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Oh my goodness. You know, Shamine, you mentioned earlier. You know, things that you should look out for. You know, in addition to anxiety and stress, fear of the unknown, as you're uh, preparing for this life change. What mm. were some of the things that you are currently actually going through in preparation for your own major change? Oh, such an interesting question. Relocating. Uh, yeah. Um, I think that the, the awareness is that there's a lot. I, you know, a lot of emotional turmoil that you go through, a lot of um, ups and downs, and it's a lot of mental burden as yeah. well. So you feel sometimes like uh, less able to perform in certain aspects of your life that you were normally pretty okay in. Mm. Um, and I think that is a case with every change. You know, if you're preparing for a wedding or a child, you know, suddenly your focus in work maybe might be affected because there's just so much mental load. Um, taken away because of what's what preparing for what's to come, um, emotional load as well. So much and your emotional capacity is so much more reduced because it's just uh, okay. What's going to happen? The stress of it, managing that and all that. So a lot of that's taken away, and you try to have to dig deep and then find some ways of of managing that, um, of of kind of coping with that issue and all that. So for myself, you know, I was like, oh my goodness, my glass of wine has now become two um, glasses of wine in the evening uh, kind of thing. So <laughs> I guess, you know, we, I mean, but it's an interesting thing because we have to also adapt our coping mechanisms to mm-hmm. deal with all these things that are coming in. Um, and I think that's the one thing. That change is the only constant. And as things happen, it's also a chance for us to evolve with it as well. So we mm-hmm. can start to use this opportunity to change up coping styles. We can change up um, the way we talk to people or we can discover new people that we can, you know, lean on as well. New support mm. groups and new avenues of, of um, just in increasing the emotional capacity that we need to do. Yeah. yeah. Why is it important to kind of find a coping mechanism? Or can we not just take it in our stride and deal and with it? Deal with it as it mm. comes along. Or uh, I, I know that sounds ideal. Yeah, yeah. It sounds yeah. ideal, but is that is it better to sort of kind of do a self audit or, or, or open yourself up and really embrace this and 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 mm. t- think to yourself how best do i deal with this actually that's a great question how best do i deal with this and if you know if you tell yourself in your mind i'm just gonna power through i'm i'm just gonna you know be my same self and, and power through then if that works for you then mm. by all means mm. but at the same time you know we have a finite uh, our mental and emotional capacity is finite right. we, we have to recharge at some point and if we know that something is is really sapping on that then mm. we have to find other ways of trying to maximize that you know when life change happens you know imagine that jug full of water and you're you're pouring to the same cups there's still food yeah. that you have to give to your family there's still work that you have to do there's still social all these different cups still exist but you know maybe there is a lot a new cup that's a, a big one that you have to pour into as well so how do you uh. then increase the capacity in this jug or at least give it time to refill. So that's when you find other ways of managing this to, to make sure that, hey, I still have enough for all the other things in my life. And this change, while it's big and while it's coming and it's looming and stuff, mm-hmm. um, it doesn't have to negatively impact all the other parts of my life as well. Oh. A four-day work week, I feel, would be the answer. <laughs> or throwing <laughs> away old underwear. <laughs> your husband <sighs> yeah. Baby steps Let's go before they work <laughs> Very timely Especially if you're having to pack To move overseas Oh, Ooh, the There's a lot of Decluttering <laughs> I'm sure <laughs> any, yes. any underwear That you're throwing away That's not yours I, I can't say oh. That's a resounding <laughs> yes then <laughs> It's very discreet You know She is a therapist <laughs> darling. Yes Alright we're about to head back uh, Live on air Would you mind if we uh, Kind of recap The thought of how You know Because you're going through Changes You might not be able to give To all the other areas mm. Of your life equally mm. And that's okay Okay, it's about how finding that coping yeah. mechanism, that happy middle ground, yeah? All right, hang tight.
I'll tell you who's got it. Charmaine Marsha. That's Yay. Venus from Bananarama, 1FM 91.3. Yes, she is our clinical therapist that we speak to on Mondays here on The Bright Side. It's going to be our very final chat because uh, Charmaine is preparing to move overseas oh. with her family. So that's a very big life change, which is also our topic for today. How do we cope and how do we deal with life changes? Now, we're live on Facebook as well. So do join us there. And earlier on, one of the topics that came up on our off-air discussion was how, you know, it's actually okay because when you're going through a life change, you can't exactly expect to give to all areas of your life equally um, and that's okay Uh, could you just recap some of those uh, you know points that you mentioned Mm -hmm. so yeah we have our finite jug of water that we're trying to pour into all the same cups that haven't changed yet you know despite whatever's coming Um, and accepting the fact that sometimes with a life change that's coming you know our capacity to perform as well at work has to be adjusted you know can we really perform as well at work can we really perform as well at home or with our mm-hmm. friends what has to give you know and what and it, is it okay to sacrifice some aspects of our daily functioning to make room for for this um, change that's going to happen right. and i think that's inevitable but it's a kind of accepting that okay i don't have to be a hundred percent for everything at this point mm-hmm. it's okay to be 80 percent here 70 percent here 110 percent there it's okay but kind of being honest with that mm. and and sitting with that reality Mm -hmm. will help us to start accepting it and then moving forward more um, realistically that's That's love I love it because it's a very compassionate view towards yes. yourself. Yes. Yeah. And I think, you know, when we think about, like for me, when I when we were presented this topic, I was like, oh yeah, that one life change. And I forget that it will impact the rest of your life, you know, and how you cope mm-hmm. with it. You have to think about how it's impacting the rest of your life. Why have a finite pitcher of water? Mm. For me, I've changed. I hook it up to the hose. <laughs> And it's a power hose. <laughs> ah, then spray I just spray else. the yeah. cup change, the size change, don't care. Just spray. Yeah. Never ending. <laughs> We have a really great comment from uh, Juan Alun and uh, he says, you know, I'm not sure if I can take it if life was stagnant. He embraces change, mm-hmm. you know. He says that if not, every day is the same. So he actually tries to create small variations and uh, mm. and I feel, he feels that he will welcome big changes occasionally. How do you feel about that kind of a mindset? Actually, that's fantastic because I was just going to say that many different people have different um, mindsets towards change. Some people, uh, like one, I think they they enjoy change they embrace it and this keeps keeps them going keeps them on their toes keeps Mm -hmm. them constantly changing and evolving and that's something that's very invigorating as well but there are also another group of people who maybe prefer um, stability and predictability in their life Mm -hmm. so when any kind of change no matter how big or small Mm. it becomes very disruptive and can tend to you know this disreal unreal Derail. Derail. Thank you. <laughs> it's okay. We understand. My mental 100%. capacity. But yeah, so it can derail everything that they have been um, so used to already. So yeah, mm. I mean, I think it's okay also to understand that there is a diff- there's a spectrum maybe of how we deal with change and how we look at change and whatever works for you, you should be able to sit with that and say, okay, you know, this is what I'm used to, so I'm comfortable with, and I'm going to just go with this version of what I can do right now. Wow. Just just going on what uh, Wan Alun said there. Um, uh, he likes the the changes, like mm. even daily changes. Mm. Uh, I guess he finds things mundane. But is is it also something that we should need to be cognizant about? Is um, small changes that can add up to, I guess, you oh. know, they, they 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 become cumulative, right? So it's mm. not just about life changes; mm-hmm. it's also about coping with the little changes as well. Yeah, and <clears throat> you're absolutely right. Sometimes the small changes, if we don't, if we tend to, oh, okay, it's a small change, I can deal with that. It's yeah. okay, and then brush it off, you know. And then over time, these small changes accumulate and mm. they snowball to something that's bigger. And we realize that, oh my gosh, all this has happened, and where was I in this whole thing? You know, and that's happened to so many of us, I think, over time, where we don't realize or not sitting with the awareness that things have been changing for us. Which is why, you know, if you're able to take the time to sit down and uh, reflect on what has been happening so far, what has changed so far, mm. and how have I been different because of that I think that gives us a lot of insight and um, you know gives us a stepping stone to then take the next step okay what do I need to do to evolve to make things a bit easier for me to make things better for the people around me as well right Mm -hmm. such deep thoughts I mean it kind of brings me back to the question of how like some people don't realise they're going through changes and what you need to recognise in yourself and your situation uh, so that you can come to like you know an evolved version of yourself I love that thought that you you brought up this morning what version of me do I need to be (laughs) some Something I never really thought about, actually. Uh, all right, the discussion continues live on Facebook. Join us there, facebook.com slash 1FM913. Back with more of Charmaine Marsh in just a bit. What version of me do I need to be? Oh, my goodness. <laughs> oh. And that's okay, right? Mm. There yeah. are 
How many versions should we have ideally? <laughs> Say what? <laughs> oh dear. <laughs> because we wear, we wear so many hats yeah. as well. There's mom, a sister, daughter, that kind mm. of thing. And, and life can all kind of like converge all on the one path all of a sudden. Yeah. So that, that's uh, how do we go about actually processing that um, you know, when you're stressed? Yeah, I, I think having a good realistic um, expectation of yourself without putting too much, you know, uh, when you sit down and reflect about, about where you are in this in this process and where you want to be, you know, uh, what kind of mom, I mean, break it down. If, if you see it as one big um, chunk of, oh, me, it's, it, it's going to be very uh, difficult to kind of mm, be very specific yeah. about it. But if you break it down, okay, as a mom, you know, mm-hmm. what do I hope for myself? What are my best hopes? It doesn't have to be the perfect mom on Instagram or TikTok or whatever. Right. What is the the mm. best version of myself I can be in this state right now with my current capacity with my current mental load emotional capacity um, in work what, what's the best version of myself I can be mm-hmm. so in each one be realistic about what you can give if right now I'm going through a life change and I have to take a step back from my social group then that's what I have to do if um, that means that my, my, my patience maybe is a bit <clears throat> less when it comes to like my family then I have to be honest with that as well and say that you know maybe have a chat with my family and bring mm-hmm. it up and I'm right now I'm, I'm strapped I'm up to here I'm I'm um, 90% full of, of, of all these stresses right mm. now and I'm gonna be snappy I'm gonna be a bit more tired I'm gonna be a bit more unreasonable maybe can you be patient with me mm. having this con- first the awareness and then conversations with people around you I think that helps as well when you realise that okay I'm, I'm, more, I'm more aware of this mm-hmm. they are more aware of it and we're not gonna you know bang hits so much yeah. now, 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 now that we all know what's going on mm. yeah so communication is really key. You it know, gives it's you the about, room for that, yeah. Yeah, and I guess, you know, and when you're trying to communicate all that changes that's happening for you to those around you who are going to be most impacted by it as well, um, I think it gives you a chance to also gain some clarity. You know what yeah. I mean? Because you're kind of running through, you're like, oh, actually, you know. No, no, no. Um, which brings us to our next question. How do we support someone who is going through mm. life changes, even big ones, small ones, just going through these changes? I think the, f- the first thing I would recommend <clears throat> is to not assume what they need. You know, ask them and listen. You know, what do you need at this point? What what kind of support do you need from me? I mean, if you can imagine anyone who's been through life changes, like going through, going about to get married, or I'm going to have a kid soon, the amount of unsolicited advice that they're gonna <laughs> get, <laughs> it's just going to overwhelm yeah, them, right? Yeah. So don't don't be one of those people. Just ask. You know, hey, if you're going through this now, what do you need from me? Do you need me to back off? Do you right. need me to be there? Do you need me to you know deliver you food and anonymously deliver you food? You know, so what um what works for them, they'll tell you. Uh, just and just sit with it. If they say, "Hey, back off," it's nothing personal. I just need the space to kind of, you know, recalibrate myself. Then do so. You know, in in backing off, sometimes you may not feel like you're helping, but mm-hmm. that is what that person needs and what not what you need to feel mm. for them. Mm. If, if I may just ask, though, what if we feel that what that person is saying isn't actually what they need? Uh, I know, I know yeah. that sounds selfish, <laughs> and I know that sounds very subjective. But if we think that their solution is to just leave me alone. Yes. Yeah. When we actually think, but you need the help. Whoa. Yeah, sometimes like our parents mm. or our spouses, even you know, they say things because they don't want to trouble you. Yeah, right. like, uh, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. So and actually, mm-hmm. you you, mm-hmm. you kind of do need the help. What does one do in that situation? Like like intervene in that sense, or do we just mm. do we just respect their wishes? I think it's okay if they're going through a life change. Then it's best to <clears throat> respect what they're going through because we don't know how they're processing okay. it, right? Okay. If you're like you know, the the person who commented, like um, if you are used to change and you welcome change and mm. change is something that's part and parcel of your life, then mm-hmm. fantastic. Right. But if you're someone who's who when when change happens, you know it becomes very deliberating. Sure. Then maybe it's best to see what they need, <clears throat> and I think the most important thing is to put it out there. When you need me, I'm here. Ah, right. When you okay. need anything, I'm here. Just that constant message that when the time is right, when you need me, I'm here. Okay. I haven't abandoned you. You're not alone. Right. But yeah, when you need me, I'm here. Okay, that's fair. It's true that a lot of people will give you unsolicited advice when you're going through a big change. Yes. But Charmaine, this is the only one you need to take. Yes, ma'am. Don't go. <laughs> to stay here with us forever. Right? We're being selfish, yes, we right? are. Outrightly yes, totally. selfish. Yes. I'm, I'm honest about it's it. It's okay to cry. I'm honest about yeah. it, yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Only because we just. Uh, such a fond attachment to Aww. you. <laughs> yes, what will we do now? <laughs> All righty, just about to head back live on air for our final chat with Shami Marsh. So Bruce Springsteen and Dancing in the Dark here on 1FM 91.3 Good Times Greatest Hits. Good morning. Welcome to the Bright Side. 
hopefully when you dance the lights are on so you don't bump into things and get hurt okay <laughs> it's our very last chat this morning with Charmaine Marsh our clinical director and senior therapist over at goodity.co and she comes in on Mondays to chat with us and today's topic happens to be how to deal with life changes because you know face it we all go through them at some point of time mm-hmm. how do we deal with them and Charmaine yourself this is our last chat today because you're moving away uh, we protested off air of course <laughs> but uh, do what you must girl for your husband and your family and of course we wish you all the best now we've been having some very uh, interesting discussions on how to deal how to support someone who's going through a change and I think off air Shazad raised a good point about how do we support someone who is going through a life change but um, actually doesn't want to kind of admit it they yeah. need to change we, we kind of know that they do need the support but they don't want to burden us right mm. yeah, yeah. I think um, you know, like what we said off air as well. <clears throat> um, just putting it out there, a constant assurance that you know you're not alone, mm-hmm. and that um, whenever you need it, whenever you're ready, I'm here for you. Uh, you don't have to. You don't have to accept my help now, but the knowledge that there's someone there for you mm-hmm. is it, something that would would help your friend or whoever you're talking to <clears throat> in general. Mm-hmm. Um, I think uh, what will help would help us well is to think about yourself in this person's shoes if you were going through something and you mm. want to support but you were not ready for it right now you just you know just too much noise going on and you have to you want to stop but you want to be involved and all this kind of stuff mm-hmm. what would what will work for you and then offer that same kind of support to your friend or whoever it is Fair. yeah mm. Mm. are there three takeaways that you want us to remember in dealing with life changes well, I've heard this one line before. I forgot where I heard it from, but they said that change is the only constant in life. Ah. Yes. So in that sense, you know, knowing that that's going to happen, then we can sit in the acceptance that life will not be this way always. It makes us treasure things more now and it makes us prepared for, okay, when things change, it's part and parcel. That's okay. Um, you know, change is uncomfortable, but also necessary because that gives us the chance to evolve into mm. something that a better version of ourselves we hope mm. at least but now we with that knowledge we have a choice of evolving to a better version of ourselves or if you if you don't have that knowledge uh, awareness then you can kind of um, get affected with, with it very mm. negatively and you mm. become you know you, you're coping maladaptively mm. so be aware and then make the best of what's going to happen because you know it's going to happen yeah can I ask you how you've um, managed to manage this change, manage to manage this change, <laughs> with your parents? Because you've had to say... Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah. Wait a bit, right? Wow. Yeah. That's something I often think about, you know, when, like, say, the idea of moving away mm. comes up. How would you... How do you navigate that conversation? That was a tough one to have. And I, I, I wanted to put it off, but I also knew, like, you can't put it off for too long, right? Mm. Yeah. Um, so I was nervous because, you know... Uh, how do you then tell your parent that I've been with you all these my whole life and I'm gonna like get you know, disappear yeah. and it's not gonna be a, a walk <laughs> around the block in order to get me? Um, ah. Yeah, so there's a lot of anxiety and there's a lot of maybe that 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 worry that what if they don't give me their blessing? What if they don't accept it? What if right. they are angry? What if they, what if I hurt them? Mm-hmm. And there's a lot of this weight on it. And um, I think you know, kind of gearing myself up to tell them was a tough thing as well. Mm-hmm. But I had my partner, my, my kids, and all that. Just kind of okay, we gotta go do this and we get it done. And once I got it done, the the surprising thing was, hey, it was actually not what I expected. Mm-hmm. It was it was welcomed. It was you know there was a lot of love. There was a lot of support. There was a lot of oh come let's see how well unsolicited, but you know a lot of you know that the support is there, and you know that you know that I'm just trying to see how I can help you the best way I can. Mm-hmm. And I think that was something that I didn't expect. And it was very, very comforting. And like I think it brings back to the point is that um, you know that you have a support group there. You know you have people there for you no matter what. And mm-hmm. you know even though this is going to happen, this change is going to happen, it doesn't change the relationship so much. Mm-hmm. You know, it doesn't change the, um, the love you feel for that person. It just means it's a different mm. way of showing it now that we're so far apart. Think of it this way, Carol. Mm. You could be the big life change onto your parents. Yeah. Hey, mom, I'm moving. I'm actually at the airport oh, good now. Riddance. Yeah, <laughs> flying off like now. <laughs> She's like, thank God. Go back. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I'm kidding. Because sometimes you do get guilted, you know, into yes, thinking yeah. that yep. why you abandoned yes. me? You don't love me yeah, anymore. But actually, an interesting thing about guilt is you you normally feel guilt when you do something good for yourself. Yeah. Ah, uh, you know, we're sitting with that for a bit. Because, yeah, well, you feel guilt okay. because you're doing something for yourself and not something for someone else. Ah, yeah. bum bum Ooh. bum. I know. Thank you Next for ending. Chat. Yeah, yeah. No, <laughs> what? Yeah. Oh, so you're staying? Okay, great. <laughs> <laughs> I uh, just want to 
I was racking my brains thinking about what to give to you in a farewell because you know she's going to be moving right. You don't mm. want to give her something. She's like, now I got to carry a potted plant to New Zealand. <laughs> what? So I decided you're going through a lot right now. Chocolate always helps always, me, yes. and also something for aromatherapy just to ease oh, your thank stress. You so much. That and was my uh, idea, the aromatherapy. Yeah, obviously. yeah. Not the keen underwear, fresh underwear. Oh my goodness, Shazad! <laughs> thank you for everything you've done for thank the you show. For having me. Thank all you, these Shami. Monday it was such a good chat always. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, we're gonna miss you. We wish you all the very best. Yeah. Yes, please take care. As you explore new horizons with your family. All right, you take care. Keep in touch. He'll do. Good times, greatest hits. Good times, greatest hits.